Hello, my name is Tim Schmidt. I am an assistant professor of hematology at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And I'm here today to talk about updates to the NCCN guidelines for the diagnosis and treatment of monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, or MGUS, and smoldering myeloma. So for MGUS, there haven't really been a whole lot of changes, you know, particularly in terms of risk stratification and progressive uh, progressing to multiple myeloma. But I think that the big thing to know is that there was an update to add the term monoclonal gammopathy of neurological significance, particularly for patients with IgM-related polyneuropathy, which I know can be a challenging uh, consult. Uh, but I think the bigger point for hematologists here is that uh, even though the risk of progression to myeloma hasn't really changed in a while, this monoclonal gammopathy of clinical significance or these syndromes that can be associated with it are important things to think about when you're seeing these patients for MGUS uh, and it, it, a really uh, a thorough history review of systems and a targeted exam is really necessary for these patients to determine whether any extra uh, testing is needed uh, or if a referral to another specialist is indicated. Regarding smoldering myeloma, I think that the key, there are a couple of key updates here. The first is that uh, the guidelines have now been updated and the algorithm updated to show a difference between patients with high risk smoldering and standard risk smoldering. And the criteria to categorize patients as high risk has now been updated to use the 2220 criteria. This is a very easy criteria to remember. It's a free light chain ratio of 20 to 1 monoclonal protein of two grams per deciliter and bone marrow plasma cells of 20% or greater. And having two of these or greater indicates that somebody is high risk. Um, and the, really the reason that this is so important is that uh, we're starting to learn about which patients with smoldering myeloma are appropriate for early intervention. And, you know, this is based on a couple of studies, but most pertinently, the recent E3A06, the ECOG study, showed a substantial benefit in progression-free survival for treatment with lenalidomide as opposed to observations uh, for patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma by the 2220 criteria. There's a lot of nuance here, and it's important to know that even with this you know, substantial PFS benefit, Treating everybody with high-risk smoldering is undoubtedly going to over-treat about 20% of, the, of patients. And we also don't know whether this is actually improving overall survival or whether we're improving these patients' lives as a, you know, with early intervention. The idea is that we prevent fractures and renal failure and all of uh, the complications from myeloma. And most of us believe that probably this is beneficial for most patients. Uh, but we also don't know whether lenalidomide is the optimal approach or whether something more intense, such as on the ASCENT trial, uh, is the preferred way to treat these patients. So it's really critical that these patients be referred for clinical trials because we desperately need to understand this better. And I do think that, you know, once we you know, better understand which patients we should be intervening on, particularly with the addition of cytogenetics to risk stratification models, or uh, newer genomic tools and immunological profiling, you know, could help us to do that. Uh, I think that if we are able to further understand what the best way to manage these patients is so that they live longer and live better is critically important and why clinical trials are so emphasized in the new NCCN guidelines.